Hi everyone, thanks for attending this presentation. My name is Sri Patapati and I'm presenting a comparison of mixing mass transfer energy and material requirements for drinking water ozonation. Let's start with some of the basics. Ozone contacting for municipal water treatment is conducted in serpentine basins, and these can be vertical serpentine or horizontal serpentine, or in pipelines. The two main methods of ozone dissolution are fine bubble diffusion and or side stream injection in basins and pipelines with or without additional mixing equipment. This can be done with degassing or without degassing as well. Bubble diffusers for ozone have a design similar to aerated bubble columns. For ozone, diffusers require deeper water columns and over under contactors typically. The contactors require separate dissolution chambers followed by contacting chambers as well. And the number of chambers will vary depending on the applied dose of ozone, the flows, and the type of disinfection targets that we're looking at. For example, for cryptosporidium inactivation, uh, a general recommendation is like 10 additional over under cells for contact time for meeting CT. Then we look at side stream injection in basins or in pipelines. In side stream injection, the side stream is pulled from bulk flow and run through a venturi injector where the ozone gas is injected into it. And this ozonated side stream is then remixed with the main bulk flow with hydraulic mixing provided by jet nozzles. So we typically don't need as many dissolution cells or separate dissolution cells that you might require with fine bubble diffusers. And then with side stream pipeline injection, it's a lot more straightforward. So you're taking all care of all of this in a pipeline. So you're not counting on the, the over under contactor or any serpentine contacting for, uh, for additional mixing or contact time as much. So fundamentally, we can see that the fine bubble diffusers are generally less energy intensive and the side stream injection can be more energy intensive, but fine level diffusion can have significant capital costs and operation and maintenance costs for replacement of gaskets and diffusers, um, you know, having to stop the plant uh, flow and having to get in there to actually physically take care of it. Whereas with side stream injection, there's less capital cost, but then we have to worry about how much energy we use on a side stream pump. But so both these require careful consideration and careful design. Ozone has still not been adopted much in the United States as it has been in Europe for many reasons, right? And uh, it, the ozone generation technology is improving. And at the same time, we need, to, we need to look at the improvements in ozone dissolution technology. I feel like a lot of the technology is based off of remnants of chlorine contactor design. Uh, and so we need to consider a lot of things, including mass transfer, decay, uh, reaction rate, and reaction kinetics. Uh, and, and also we need to try to use tracer studies and CFD where possible for plant-specific and application-specific designs. So which brings us to the motivation for this current work. There have been a lot of studies which have looked at parts of the ozone dissolution systems. Some have focused on capital-intensive redesigns of contactors to improve mixing, and others have looked at O&M costs. So there's, there's a bunch of information out there, but what we want to try to do is put it all together and compare these things side by side. It's also worth noting that ozone currently is not included in the life cycle analysis for disinfection applications from the US EPA. And as people who want ozone to, to, to be the next big thing, we, we don't want that. I think it would be good to, to, to have energy comparisons side by side. So we define our objectives here to better understand the differences and operating principles between the different ozone dissolution methods and to evaluate the role of overall basin hydraulics performance on the ozone dissolution capital and O&M costs. Okay, let's brush up on some background concepts. In contactors, we want to stay as close to plug flow as we can, but in reality, it's really hard to escape short circuiting in basins because sharp edges, right? And we want to reduce dispersion 
And first of all, we didn't know there was dispersion until we did tracer studies. We didn't know how much dispersion there was rather until we did tracer studies. And then after we do tracer studies, we figure out there's dispersion and we want to reduce it. And uh, in order to do so, we typically add a lot of baffles and we look at baffling factors and so on. And of late, people have been using CFD to get more targeted designs uh, for these baffles and to improve the base and hydraulics. But fundamentally, short circuiting and you know, insufficient initial mixing and increased dispersion can be a significant uh, bad factor when it comes to, to affecting the disinfection performance. So the way we design contactors is vertical over under, which is required for fine bubble diffusers or horizontal serpentine, which are less head loss, less capital cost. And again, we see there's a contradiction here. We need a, we have a mixing zone where we want thorough mixing, rapid, almost instantaneous mixing. And then we have a contact zone where we want near plug flow to get CT. So we, as we can imagine, the energy can increase with increasing the number of energy requirement can increase with increasing the number of baffles and increasing the contact zone length and also pumping against uh, say 24 feet of water column versus 20 feet or 16 feet of water column. So we have to consider a lot of things when we look at these designs. Let's look at the required water column depth for mass transfer. Do we really need deep basins? What is the rationale for this? So with fine bubble diffusers, we generally assume that we need deep basins because we want to minimize the bubble diameter. We want to allow for sufficient time for the ozone to dissolve. And the mass, so when we do this, the mass transfer rate tends to be dependent on the depth. So it's not even. And with side stream mixing systems, on the other hand, the bubbles are constantly sheared due to high turbulence and mixing. And this increased mixing causes a rapid renewal of the gas liquid interface. So the mass transfer rate is enhanced by turbulent mixing. So there's something to think about when it comes to do we really need the 22 or 24 feet of water column for ozone transfer dissolution. In general, mixing can be classified into agitation and blending. With agitation, our goal is to improve mass transfer to promote shearing of the bubbles and rapid renewal of the gas liquid interface. And with blending, we are looking at CT and residual control and gas feed control and so on, especially with automated systems. So the gauge mixing, typically we use a bunch of different ways. And uh, the most common one I've seen in practice is the coefficient of variation, which is uh, more appropriate for blending. The, and we, we look at the coefficient of variation of the dissolved ozone residual and try to keep it under 5%. And if it's there, then we assume that it's really well mixed. What, why, do, why are we so concerned about mixing? So let's take a look at our standard mass transfer model here. And uh, you know, we assume that you know, clearly the, the, one of the biggest driving forces here is the concentration gradient. And when we look at the concentration gradient, we assume that C0 or CT there is, or that C sub T um, assumes that it's completely mixed. It assumes the water is completely mixed and that the equilibrium dissolved ozone concentrations are same everywhere in the contact. In the contact. So that, that is very difficult to achieve when we have poor mixing. So when we have poor mixing or mass transfer, we have you know, poor residual. When we look at residual, and residual has become important of late because you know, we use, we, we gauge the mixing uh, by the variability of the ozone residual. The less the variability, the better mix we think we are. And often we also measure the ozone residual and, and then gauge if we want to, if we need to produce more ozone, add more ozone to the water to compensate, to reach, keep our ozone residual at our target. So if our, as imagined, if our ozone residual fluctuates a lot and our coefficient of variation is high, then this can cause the ozone generator costs to go up. And this is a general estimation. This doesn't include the handling costs or the storage costs for locks. And uh, it's also important uh, to mention here that very recently in Orlando, we heard authorities talk about uh, you know, trying to get water treatment plants to use less locks because you know, this, there's shortage for COVID. So all the more reasons for us to be more uh, careful when it comes to design. And then we have to worry about CT, right? And where do we measure the CT? There are multiple ways of looking at this. And as you can see, the US EPA has many guidelines. 
So this, in, in essence, can also be a very crucial part of the type of uh, the solution system we choose. So to summarize, we want to look at water column requirements for mass transfer. We want to compare the energy requirement for mixing. We want to compare the footprint, and we want to also compare the turndown and capability for turndown. And a quick note on turn down here and diffusers are slightly less amenable to turn down. They can require multiple treatment trains uh, fundamentally because that's the way diffusers are. But it's a lot easier to turn down uh, with side stream systems by turning on or off additional injectors or using VFDs. Now let's look at a few case studies here. What you're looking at here is the Mannheim water treatment plant located in Kitchener, Ontario. This was originally a fine bubble diffuser system with air-fed ozone, and this was later fished, uh, f switched to oxygen-fed ozone, and was recently switched to side stream injection. There's a really good study that details 30 years of experience at the Mannheim uh, plant that you will find in the references. So what you're looking at here is a comparison of the side stream injection system that is currently installed at Mannheim with uh, the previously installed fine bubble diffuser systems. You're looking at the flows here, the, the flows and the applied doses. The applied dose at average flow is five milligrams per liter. It's a disinfection application. And do realize that we're not using as much floor space as we, we would be using with the diffuser. So if this were a brand new construction, we would not need the excessive uh, floor space or capital or the footprint that was used here. This was a retrofit though. So what you see here are CFD results of the uniformity of ozone distribution across the the cells, and you can see that the the ozone was the ozonated water was injected in cell two at the entrance of cell two, and you can see that right away you have really good mixing, and uh, this is also reflected in the quantitative uh, number of the normalized standard deviation here, which is less than five percent, which is pretty much the COV. And which also tells us that if we were to measure the ozone residual at uh, cell three, the overflow into cell three, we would have stable readings over there. Good spot to measure. So I also did a comparison of uh, tracer studies that were originally done for the same plan by someone else in 2007, that was Zhang et al. Uh, they did a really great job uh, looking at the tracer studies and how uh, the tracer studies are changed by adding or removing diffuser disks. And they found that reducing diffuser disks reduced short circuiting as well there. So what you're looking at here are the results for from CFD tracer studies uh, at the end of cell two. And as you can see with the orange curve, we have a lot more closer to CSDR behavior, which we want for mixing, right? In the dissolution zone, it's rapidly mixed and, and the overall concentration is a fairly uniform compared to what you would see with a fine bubble diffuser system the, in, um, in the same system. And we don't want ozone to linger in the water for too long either. We want ozone to, to get the job done and move on. And what we're looking at here is mixing in a pipeline. And uh, this is a lot easier to control and it's a lot you know, you, easier to get uh, close to plug flow because it's a pipeline application. And the key thing to note here is that we were surprised to note that we were able to achieve 95%, more than 95% mass transfer and less than 5% dissolved ozone coefficient of variation, uh, and also treat the entire plant flow with one pipeline contactor, and also be able to do that with pumping against a lot less water column, right? And uh, this was a good uh, surprise, a pleasant surprise, and this leads us to the adds into our discussion later on. So like, as I mentioned, the 45 MGD plant previously was then split into two contactors with fine bubble diffusers. Currently, all of this is treated in one 36 inch Maisie pipeline flash reactor with five injectors that you can turn on or off. And if you combine that with a VFD system, you're looking at significant savings. So let's have, go through a, a small discussion here. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison for disinfection application. And this, all these details will be included in the paper. So the fine bubble diffusers are compared with side stream injection in basins and side stream injection in pipelines. The key difference with pipeline and basins is that I'm using one contactor for pipelines based on our experience at OUC. 
uh, Southwest. And we're looking at treating 100 MGD. And when keeping everything else the same and using the, the assumptions that are provided in the US EPA SWOT analysis for the contacting uh, size of contactors, the size requirement for uh, uh, each contacting dissolution zone, um, and, and, uh, and also the water column depth, uh, all these were pulled from the OS, uh, US EPA uh, SWOT analysis. Uh, so based on that and using the work that was done uh, by Snyder et al. at uh, Mannheim uh, for extrapolating the maintenance costs for diffusers and side stream injection at the same plant, we then look at the overall costs here. So if you look at the overall costs, and this does not include locks, does not, does not include uh, uh, additional costs because of COV, does not include capital costs, none of that. So you can see that side stream injection kind of comes out as slightly ahead, but this is because it's a very well designed and carefully uh, set up system. And we're looking at a 5% side stream over here. But the key is that if we were to start from scratch and if we were to design a side stream injection system correctly, then we would not have to you know, have extensively uh, uh, long uh, contacting zones or we, we can probably cut down costs with footprint. And also with side stream injection, you have the additional, you know, the additional benefit of hydraulic mixing. And this is generally not there in fine bubble diffusers because they're not intended to really cause hydraulic mixing. So when you, when you look at it from the perspective of horsepower for a thousand cubic feet, it's a lot higher with side stream. And so is the G value. We look at the G value as well. So to conclude, side stream injections generally provide a much better coefficient of variation of mixing. There are papers out there that, that actually list this, which results in less material use, locks, which is crucial, less space use for lock storage, as well as the overall uh, side stream injection itself, uh, lower capital costs, O&M costs, and the potential to look at CT earlier. And um, we also, uh, in, in basins, using side stream injection with jet nozzles generally creates much more uniform dissolved ozone concentration and the total, total ozone concentration, total energy requirement uh, for ozone uh, applications when defined as the ozone dissolution plus ozone contacting reveals that ozone dissolution with side stream injection system can provide lower 20 year O&M costs uh, with really good design and aided by CFD. With that, here are some references and thank you so much again and uh,